you know, it's that's probably a huge part of it is, uh, you know, waking up, having your cup of coffee, coming to the beach, checking out the surf, seeing if you're tough enough to go through it that day. For generations, those brave enough to test the patience and will of Mother Nature at Cape Kawanda discovered doing that in a dory boat is like no other experience in the world. Because you're not just getting put into the ocean. You're, you're fighting through, you know, sometimes six, seven foot tall breakers. As I watch you to grow. Zach Best's sons are fifth generation Oregon fishermen. It's giving you your say. That's always been the catch of my day. A dory boat at Pacific City has been part of the family legacy. It's mainly, this is the, you know, top two spots for dory fishing. Cape Kaiwanda, a mass of sandstone that blocks the wind, the water, and seems to know how to protect the fishermen that dare to launch their boats in her shadow. I just hope one day that they fish during high school and college and when I retire that they let me come out. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a family legacy. I would love to help you. <laughs> Roy, are you gonna let me come out fishing one day when I'm old? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. There, there's a lot of guys out here, but it's so sparse and you're to yourself, so it's, it's quite special. Thanks, buddy. Have a good day. But this used to be the second largest producing salmon port in all of Oregon. And then the numbers declined and commercial fishermen's declined. So it's uh, not fished as heavily anymore and more boats from other areas are creeping in. Fishermen know the waters off Cape Kaiwanda can be good to them. That's what's so special about Pacific City. Tuna come in closer, halibut come in closer. I don't know what it is about this port, but it's a really, really special place. Just a really large stretch of ocean where there's no uh, marinas where other kinds of boats can come out unless they want to spend a lot of gas. So the Dory fleet kind of has their own stretch of the ocean where it's mostly just wood boats. The Dory fisherman is a special breed. You have to be to put up with the forces of nature and culture that sometimes seem to work against you. It shows how crafty they can be. Um, to see something out in the ocean and then to build a special kind of boat to make it happen, those are some tough guys and I think Oregon really fits that same, that same trend where we are, you know, we just don't give up. Roy and Rusty are not afraid of the ocean. Sure, some of that may be in their blood, but fortitude is taught, learned, and encouraged. It doesn't come naturally. I own the boat. Hey, I'm driving that. The thing that I want to impart to them is, if you want something, go get it. Don't look back. And when the going gets tough, sometimes you have to, you have to stick it out and work through it. Uh, the commercial fishing is, a really, really cool way to teach them uh, how hard work can pay off. It's a hobby. It's trying to keep the heritage alive, fighting for what we believe in. But no, I. That's. It's a really hard life to do it full time. You know that a whole American dream. Um, it's great. It's. It's one of the things. And there's a lot of ways to do it. But this is the way that I found to do it. That I like it. The ability in America to still make a dollar by nothing but hard work. Um, it's, it's great to be a part of the Dory fleet. We've always filled this boat with love and hope. Reeling it and catching I did, but you are the catch of my day. the catch of my day mm -hmm. Yeah, you are the catch
touch of my 